Happy Friday, everybody. This is our finished Friday where we're, I'm going to go over tips and tricks with you every Friday at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Um, and today I'm really excited about sharing with you the ins and outs of milk paint. A lot of you see a bag of paint like this and you think, oh, I would never touch that. I want to have a can. I want to be able to pop that top and I want to be able to paint my piece of furniture. I'm telling you there is a mystery here all about milk paint. Um, while today is not a full out class, uh, that we will be offering you full modules of classes where especially if you're a professional and you want to be able to do this more, I'm going to be teaching you that. But today is a little bit about tips and tricks. So milk paint is just that. It is milk. And so that's part of the reason why it comes in a powdered form. Because if it came in a true liquid form, it would go bad just like milk would. So it has a product in it called casein. Casein is in your yogurt. If you look on the back of your yogurt, you will see uh, casein, the word casein listed. All right, so I'm going to show you, there's two products that go together in the Amy Howard at Home line, and they are cracked gesso and milk paint. Guys, there's another, another, there is not another product like this on the market. When I worked in Italy in a bodega, a little shop where they made furniture, we used cracked gesso and what this is it's a gesso it's a primer and it will make it to where it will crack and create texture and a finish to your milk paint finishes so let me show you what i mean so this is just a piece um, that i'm going to paint today this is a corbel um, a lot of these are used as decorative elements sometimes they'll hold up um, countertops or shelves or but it's just a great piece for me to be able to show you how to paint today and it kind of has an Italian flair to it. So the first thing you want to do when you're painting a piece of furniture, um, if it's raw, you can start right away. If it's not raw, if it has a finish on it, you're going to need to prime it with the one-step paint. So we're not going to talk about that today. We will talk all about the one-step paint. But in the future, if you're wanting to be able to work on top of a piece of furniture, do the one-step paint first. Um, all right, so the next thing you're going to do is we're going to mix up this cracked gesso. Cracked gesso um, will crack the patina. It adds a beautiful white finish to the surface um, of your piece that you're working on. And it's one part water and one part cracked gesso. Like I said, there's not another product like this on the market. Um, this is it. I developed this, this product as well as the process. I think I've got some of this already mixed up that I'm going to work with, but I'm just going to show you. Sometimes you just kind of have to work it into it. Now remember, we're in Memphis. This is Central Standard Time. So if you have a question, you can ask me a question. If you're watching, show me some love, especially on Instagram. You can show me some love with your hearts. So I'm just going to continue to mix this up, but because of time, I'm going to grab one over here. It's like a cooking show <laughs> that it's already done up. We have a question. How is gesso different from plaster? Oh, that's a great question. Um, there are some, um, some recipe similarities in the fact that plaster does have gypsum and it has a calcium carbonate in it, but this has some secret ingredients that causes it to crack, um, as well as some chalk in it. They're totally different. Um, but I love that. Gesso has been used like to prime canvas, um, and it also is used to prime furniture. I'm going to go into that a lot more um, in a full bone class, but this at least will give you some idea um, as far as using it to be able to get that beautiful white look underneath your pieces that you're painting, especially if you want authentic looking, um, I call it Toscana because of Tuscany, um, or um, Italian looking finishes, you've got to have this gesso. So you see how I'm putting it on. It's fairly thin because it's one part water, one part of the, um, the powdered gesso ingredients. And I'm going to allow that to dry about uh, 15 minutes. I can hit it with a hair dryer if I want to speed it up. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a second coat on it. Then I'm finished. So I'm going to set this down here because I want to be able to show you. I've already done one. This has two coats of the gesso on it. Now, you're going to notice something that um, it's kind of got a, um, a brownish color, white on it. I do want to come back after I've put two coats of the gesso on and I want to sand it. 
because it's gonna dry really, really hard. As a rule, you can use like 400 grit sandpaper. I just want you to nicely do a nice sanding over it and run your hands over it. I want it to be nice and smooth. I don't want it to be um, abrasive. I'm not doing a whole lot of sanding, but I'm just softening it. And it will have a tendency to go more white. All right. So now after you go over it, make sure it's nice and smooth. It feels good to the touch every, everywhere. Just always make sure you come back with a dry brush um, and just dust it off. You don't wanna go directly and start painting onto a surface where you're gonna have a dusty residue. So anytime you sand, just make sure you dust it off again. Again, the reason for doing a cracked gesso first underneath your milk paint is because it's going to crack it. It's also gonna give it a, a beautiful white um, undercoating that you can wear back through and it's gonna give you a beautiful, authentic looking Italian finish. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we're gonna take our milk paint. Now, we have this in a lot of different colors. Um, I'm gonna give you a little tip. We're getting ready to have a whole lot more colors. I'm in the process of um, introducing some beautiful new colors in our, um, in our milk paint line. So a lot of people will say, what makes you different um, with your milk paints as maybe someone else? Um, first of all, it is a true milk paint, but one of the exciting things is, is that I have my pigments shipped from Tuscany and um, from natural quarries. These are not synthetic pigments. There's a major difference when you start working with synthetic pigments versus natural pigments. These are beautiful natural pigments. All right, so, and they're found in nature. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this powder. Now, you only wanna mix what you need for projects. So if you need, um, if you need a quart, then mix up, you know, where you'll have a quart. If you need a pint, if you need to be able to do maybe a small project, like you're doing this core bowl, or you're wanting to do a picture frame, um, just mix up what you need. Because after you mix this up, you've only got about two weeks shelf life. So again, it's one part water with one part powder. I'm gonna mix just a little bit in here. I would rather you mix a little bit at a time. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that. Now you'll notice when you're looking at it in a dry form, it's much lighter. As you add water, of course, it's gonna go darker. But big tip here, it's going to dry down to the color that the powder was originally. See, that's why these Friday finishing um, classes are so good because you're able to learn stuff like this. A lot of people, they read about it. If you're not familiar with my book, Rescue, Restore, Redecorate, um, you want to make sure you can go to our website. It's on sale there as well as being on Amazon. It has a lot of great recipes. I go to it in detail how to work with this milk paint. All right, so you just want to mix it up really well. And I would probably take a measuring spoon or um, a cup and that way pour in, put half, maybe a half a cup of powder and then a half a cup of water and mix it up. So depending on your thickness, if you want it a little thicker, um, you can add a little bit more pigment um, and paint to it. So this is some that was already mixed up. Here's a big difference, guys, big tip, on the difference between working with milk paint and working with regular paint. It, it's, it's natural, there are no VOCs, um, but it doesn't have the chemicals in it that it's the pigmentation stays all stirred up like a regular um, paint. So the pigments are gonna fall to the bottom of this bowl. Let me show you. So see like if I pull this up, see already where there's like, I can feel it down in there. If you had a spoon, if you were here with me and I was able to show you, they'll fall. So as you're working on it, you've just got to continue to kind of agitate it. Now when you're painting, you just agitate it with your brush. So let me show you. So, I'm going to work with a chip brush. I normally like working with a chip brush. Yes, there's a question. Question. Milk paint versus one-step paint. Why would you use one over the other? They're totally different. And that's what's so great about the Amy Howard at Home line. We have lacquers. We have chalky mineral spray. Um, we have milk paint. We have one-step paint. The one-step paint is just that. It's a one-step process that allows you to be able to, without sanding, stripping, or sealing, you go directly in and you're able to paint on top of something. But it's a very hardy paint. It will give you an opaque finish, 
but this is about getting an authentic, working with milk paint is about an authentic Italian finish. They're smiling and laughing at me here. I get so excited about this. Your son just came on. Oh, no! <laughs> He's telling me, stop, you get too excited. All right, so, um, so they're totally different, and that's why you're gonna see uh, the one-step paint is great for an opaque finish, but if you want an authentic old world Toscana finish, you've got to go with milk paint. I'm gonna be telling you more information about that later, but today is just more about sh tips and letting you know um, what is it all about. All right, so as I'm dipping my brush in here, I'm going down to the bottom and I'm agitating it just a little bit. I wanna make sure that I'm not dipping it on the top. Every time I put my brush in, make sure you just kind of stir it up a little bit because it will separate and fall to the bottom. So as I'm coming and painting this, for some people it's a little weird. It's like you're painting with water, but I promise as you're needing to work on a um, more horizontal finish where it can lay down like this, it's going to set up fairly quickly and you're going to get really good coverage. The great thing about this is this is all natural. It has no VOCs. You, I'm asthmatic. You don't have to worry about any of that. All right, so you can come back a lot of times. You want to make sure you don't have any holidays. That's areas where you didn't get the paint. It's going to dry in about um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. You can hit it with a hair dryer, but if you do, don't get the hair dryer too close. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. I just want you to kind of see about the coverage. Are there any questions? Are we good? We're good right now. All right. If you like Finish Fridays, if there's something that you want to know how to do, let us know. Send us some love with some hearts and say, okay, you know, I. you might even share pictures. If you're not part of our before and after group, you need to go on Facebook. Um, and it's um, Amy Howard at Home before and after. You'll be able to see uh, different people's projects. You'll be able to share your projects. Um, because it's all about enjoying the bragging rights. All right, so I'm going to set this down here. So we put some cracked gesso on. We're going to get a beautiful cracked finish. Um, the, and this has just got one coat on it. We, I probably want to go back and put a second coat on it. But I want to show you the process of antiquing. So this is our antiquing glaze. Um, you just want to shake it up. It's again, it's water-based. You don't have to worry about this hurting your hands. There's no VOCs, it's all natural. Linda said she would love to see Venetian plaster on a piece of furniture. Oh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna show you, Linda. You're, you can be my sister in crime, because I'm like you. I love plaster. I love, um, I love working with um, things like milk paint, cracked gesso, that type thing to be able to make really beautiful, authentic finishes. All right, so now I want you to get a natural seawall sponge. You can't use a kitchen sponge for this. They're rectangles, they're shapes, they're hard edges. It's got to be very organic and really open like this. So you're going to have to work with a natural seawall sponge. So I want you to dip it down into um, this antiquing glaze that we have. And um, this is going to act as an antiquing agent and as well as a colorant for you to be able to use to antique your finish. Now, here's a big, big difference between um, the milk paint and the one-step paint. The one-step paint is there. It's not leaving. It's opaque. It's full coverage. This is totally different. I don't have to use sandpaper, guys. It's like I can antique this and make this look old and worn without sandpaper. Watch. So I'm gonna come back in, squeeze that out just a little bit. Look at this, oh my gosh. Now you're gonna to start to see why I love this. Look at this, can you see it? Can you see that? Gorgeous. Can you see? It's gorgeous, look at this. Now, one thing that I do wanna make sure that you do is I want you to have your antiquing glaze and then I also want you to have a container of water because I don't want you going directly from here where you antiqued it and you've got, there's paint all over the sponge. If I put this sponge back in here, it's going to mess up my glaze. So go into this water, clean your sponge out real good. See, look how dirty that is. Can you see that? So now clean it out real good. It's like a bath. It's just a water bath. Now go back into your glaze and then you're going to come back on your feet. So no sandpaper. We can make this look beautiful, old, worn. I'm gonna dry this off a little bit. I want you to see this. Look at that. 
Now you can see our gesso, our white gesso underneath. You can see it. Your, your crack will start to appear and it makes it look really old. Like I love this. Okay, what's so funny? Like a plumber. Like, okay, stop it, Kyle. <laughs> All right, so now I wanna take this over here. I wanna show you. Now we're gonna come over here. We've already, we've painted it on, we've cracked it, we've done our wax. And now I wanna show you the waxing process. Now, it's very, very important. You're going to have to wax this. You have to seal it. You can't not seal milk paint. It's totally different than the one-step paint. The one-step paint doesn't have to be sealed, but with this, you have to seal it. All right, so there's three different kinds of waxes. Now, I have a squeezable wax, but when you're working with Toscana, I really like you working out of these pucks. So let me show you. There's a reason for this. They're, they come in a puck and it's where you don't get on too much wax because there's a, there's a very delicate balance about waxing this. These guys are married. They're like Jean and I. Um, I don't know which one, I guess, I don't know. I'll be the dark wax, whatever. It's a little, a little bit. You've got a, a dark way. side. <laughs> I have a dark side. I don't know. All right. So, um, so you've got light antique wax and you've got dark wax. They always go together. Never use this by itself. I'm going to say that again. Never use this by itself. Um, this has bitumen in it. And um, I noticed, I was reading in Exodus one day, bitumen has, goes back to biblical times. And it has t a tar, a special kind of tar in it, um, in the wax. And it gives us that beautiful colorant. It's a natural colorant. But then we have the light antique wax, which is a combination of carnauba and beeswax. So that way when you put your finger in it and you can move it around, sometimes it may crack. Um, but you, all you have to do is press your finger down in it. Of course, you, can't, you don't want to put it in the microwave. But you'll smell the beeswax in it. The, but the beeswax is what gives it that beautiful color. That's why we call it a, a light antique wax. Unlike if we were working with clear wax, it's totally clear. There's no color. So this is a combination of beeswax and carnauba. Carnauba, remember, is used on bowling alleys. And it dries really hard. So here's the other thing I want you to do. I want you to have two brushes. When you're working with these guys, I want you to have two brushes. So you've got a light wax brush and you've got a dark wax brush. You don't ever use them. I usually will write on them and say dark wax and light wax. This goes in your DIY pantry. I talk a lot in my book about it. Um, because you can't use one brush and then start mixing them because then you've got a third color of wax. So I'm gonna take my um, my chip brush again, you, can, you don't work with a synthetic brush. You also want to make sure that you work with a chip brush. These are the Amy Howard at Home chip brushes are double the thickness. Um, and I'm going to grab some of my um, cardboard that I just take off of boxes and look how I'll offload it. Don't ever go from the, the puck onto your piece. You're going to have too much wax. You've got to offload it. And so that way you're going to be going over the entire piece. But you see how I'm constantly moving my wrist. I'm going back and forth. And I can touch it. I can feel it. It's really greasy. There's quite a bit on there. I want to make sure that I don't do too much. Now, here's a big, 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 big important thing to remember. This has got to come to tack. Make sure that your, your light wax dries first before you put on your dark wax. Big tip here. This is how a lot of people mess up their projects. They go right in and they put dark wax on top of this and all it does is smear and it moves it around and it looks messy and then you've ruined your project. We have a question. Yes. How do you clean the wax off of the chip brushes? That's a really good question. From Nancy. Nancy, good question. You can use our clean slate. Um, our clean slate is a miracle product because let's say you get too much wax on here. Um, paint thinner and lacquer thinner will not take wax off. People think it does, but it will not. Our clean slate will take off wax. It will also clean wax out of brushes. Now, because the waxes are petroleum based, they are not water based. In order to be wax, they have to spread smoothly. This is like a candle, uh, you know, hard wax that has been put into um, a product that can be used to go all over your piece of furniture and it dries hard and it protects it. The longer it dries, the better it is. 
All right, so a very smart person just brought me. So this is a clean slate. You can clean your brushes with clean slate. Such a great, you're just so attentive. I'm so proud of you, Nancy. Um, what a great question. Or let's say you put too much dark wax on. I can load it up with a, with a uh, rag and come back in and clean it off and start all over. So you have a clean slate. That's why I love it so much. All right, so you come back, make sure this comes to tack. Coming to tack with a light antique wax is gonna probably take me maybe 30 minutes. Depending on the humidity, it may take upwards of an hour, but you wanna make sure it's nice and dry. Um, and then you can come back with the dark wax. Remember, I'm gonna get a second brush. I'm gonna load it up like this. You should be able to do about 10 to 15 pieces of furniture with this. This is gonna go in my DIY pantry. Make sure that you put the tops back on it. You don't wanna make sure that they get frozen because that can mess with the quality. So don't leave all these products in the garage um, unless you know that um, it's in a cabinet that's gonna protect it from getting frozen. All right, so notice what I'm doing. I'm offloading the dark wax on here. Very little, guys, look at this. I'm just gonna highlight here and there with the dark wax. This gives it just a little bit of age. Can you see that? Just a little bit of age here and there. And it's not, it's not everywhere. Dark wax is not about going everywhere. It's on the highlights of the areas, maybe the tip tops. It's not about pouncing in it and getting it down in there. Um, then this has to dry for about, um, let's say 20 minutes, 30 minutes minimum. Now, and the thing is, this is not going to dry to a really hard finish for several days. So if you've got a dinner party, don't put this dark wax on your chairs before everybody comes over. <laughs> All right, and then last but definitely not least, after that comes to tack and it's not gonna be moving around. If you want, it's an option. It's not gonna show up as much on this gray piece, but if this were black, if this were another color, these, this dust of ages is like magic. So I'm going to um, take a clean brush, make sure you don't have any um, wax on it, and then I'm going to come around and I'm going to load this up in the crevices of this. For the diehards out there that, are, that love antiques, this is like magic dust. All right, and then I'm going to come back with a clean, dry, lint-free rag, and then I'm going to buff it, and that's going to be down in the crevices, and it's going to give me this beautiful finish you just gotta make sure that your wax is dry. It's also gonna act as a polishing agent. It's hard for you to kind of see it. As far as really buffing that up and get a really pretty sheen like it would be on a beautiful antique piece. So I'm sorry I went a little bit long today, but I want you to know that this whole process of doing finishes, of doing furniture, on um, doing decorative pieces in your home, um, there really is, um, there's kind of a science behind it and what is necessary for those products, what they need to be made out of. Because um, if you're not familiar with me and what I love, um, especially in interior design and decorating, it's all about texture. And you want to have a lot of different pieces of furniture that have different texture. You can have stained pieces, you can have painted pieces, you can have lacquered pieces, but you want to make sure that they have character um, and that they're very interesting. And then, um, you know, the fun thing about it is, then your friends are gonna come in and ask, say, oh, that's so beautiful. And it's like, how did you do that? And you get to tell them how, because you took the time and you studied and you were part of things like Finish Friday. All right, so that's our time up today. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully it was fun, hopefully it was quick, and it really allowed you to be able to learn and understand the product better. Tune in with us next Friday. We are going to um, start having some drawings for giving away free product. And um, we're gonna be looking at the people that are watching and tuned in and that are making comments and sending us love. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.